Welcome to GED Mastery. Today, let's learn how to use a Punnett square. So what is a Punnett square? It's a tool you can use to determine the probability of traits in offspring. You fill it out with each parent's genotype shown by these pairs of letters at the top and on the side of the Punnett square. You'll also need to know these words. A dominant trait is represented by a capital letter and it's always expressed if it's present, even if there's only one capital letter in the pair. The recessive trait shown with a lowercase letter will only be expressed if both alleles are recessive. Heterozygous means the two alleles for a trait are different, as in this parent, and homozygous means they're the same. This parent, for example, is homozygous dominant. Let's do a problem together. In tomatoes, red fruit, big R, is dominant over yellow fruit, little r. A plant that is homozygous for red fruit is crossed with a plant that has yellow fruit. What will be the genotype and phenotype of the offspring? So the first step in solving a Punnett square question is to identify the genotype of each parent. We have one parent that is homozygous for red fruit. Homozygous means that both alleles in the pair are the same. And since it has red fruit, that means they'll both be capital R. So one parent is capital R, capital R. And the other parent has yellow fruit. Yellow is recessive. And in order for that recessive trait to be expressed, both of the alleles have to be recessive. So the other parent is little r, little r. Now that we know the parent's genotypes, let's fill out the Punnett square. So our first parent was big R, big R. Let's go ahead and put that here. Our other parent was little r, little r. Now let's look at each box and complete the pair of alleles for the offspring. So in this box, we'll look up and to the left. We see big R, little r, and we're always going to put our capital letter first if there is one. In this box to the top and left, we also see big R and little r. In this box, up to the top and to the left, we see big R, little r again. And in our last box, we also see that we need big R, little r. Now that we've done our Punnett square, we're ready to answer this question. What will be the genotype and phenotype of the offspring? These are all the possibilities for the offspring, and they're all the same. So the genotype will be big R, little r for all of them. And the phenotype is what those offspring will actually look like. Since there's one dominant allele present, it will be red, because that's the dominant trait. So all of them will be red. Let's do a practice. If you want, pause the video so you can try it on your own before you see the solution. In pea plants, round big R is dominant to wrinkled little r. A heterozygous female is crossed with a wrinkled male. Make a Punnett square to determine the possible offspring. So I have two parents, a heterozygous female and a wrinkled male. Heterozygous means that I have two different alleles, so it's going to be big R, little r. And the wrinkled male is going to be little r, little r. He's showing the recessive trait, and in order to show that recessive trait, both alleles need to be recessive. Let's complete the Punnett square. So if I look to the top and to the left, I see big R, little r. I'm always going to write my capital letter first. Then the next square, I see little r, little r. Down here, I see big R, little r. And in the last square, 
I'm going to have little r, little r. So there are two possible genotypes in the offspring. I could have big r, little r, or little r, little r. So those are my possible genotypes. And the phenotype, what they look like, well, this one is going to be round because it has one dominant allele, so that's going to be expressed. And the little r, little r is going to be wrinkled. So half of the offspring would be round and half would be wrinkled. Let's do another practice question. Remember to pause the video if you want to give it a try on your own. In dogs, the dominant allele big F codes for gray fur and the recessive allele little f codes for black fur. A female heterozygous dog mates with a homozygous recessive male dog. What is the percentage of possible phenotypes and genotypes of their puppies? So I have a heterozygous female dog. So that is going to be big F, little f. And I have a homozygous recessive male. So the recessive is little f and homozygous means they're both the same. So little f, little f. Let's complete the Punnett square. Big F, little f, little f, little f, big F, little f, little f, little f. This one looks like the one we did last. So what is the percentage of possible phenotypes and genotypes of their puppies? So we have half of them, big F, little f, which would be gray fur, so 50%. This is the genotype, big F, little f, and this is the phenotype, what it actually looks like, gray. And then the other 50% will be little f, little f. So those ones will have black fur And it's also going to be 50%. Let's do another practice. Pause the video if you want to try it on your own. In cabbage butterflies, white wings are dominant to yellow wings. If a big W, little w butterfly is crossed with a big W, big w butterfly, what percentage of the offspring would you expect to have yellow wings? Well, they're giving us a letter that looks the same capital and lowercase. So I'm just going to choose a different letter. I'm going to use B. So big B, little b, and big B, big B. Let's complete the Punnett square. Big B, big B, big B, little b, big B, big B, and big B, little b. Now I have half big B, big B, homozygous dominant, and half heterozygous, which also shows the dominant trait. Since yellow wings are recessive, because white wings are dominant to yellow wings, there would be 0% of the offspring with yellow wings. None of them are showing the recessive trait. Let's try another practice. In dogs, there's a hereditary type of deafness caused by a recessive gene. Two dogs carry the gene for deafness but have normal hearing. What are the possible genotypes and phenotypes of their offspring and the percent chance for each? So if the dogs carry the gene for deafness, which is recessive, but have normal hearing, that means that they're both heterozygous. So I'm going to use H and each one is heterozygous. Let's do the Punnett square. Big H, big H here. 
big H, little h here, big H, little h here, and little h, little h here. So it looks like I have three possible genotypes. I'm going to have big H, big H. I'm going to have big H, little h, and little h, little h. Big H, big H, and big H, little h are both hearing. And little h, little h is deaf. So hearing and deaf are the phenotypes. And what percentage of each? Well, there's only one out of four total possibilities that are big H, big H. So that would be 25% for big H, big H. There's two out of four big H, little h, so that genotype is 50%. And there's one out of four possibility of little h, little h, so that is also 25%. So if I add up the hearing possibilities, there's 75% chance that I'll have a hearing puppy and a 25% that I'll have a deaf puppy. And those hearing genotypes are broken down into big H, big H, and big H, little h. Let's do another practice. This is a tricky one. Brown eyes in humans are dominant to blue eyes. A brown eyed man whose mother was blue eyed marries a brown-eyed woman whose father had blue eyes. What is the probability that this couple will have a blue-eyed child? So before we actually do the Punnett square, we have to figure out what the genotype of the parents is. And they don't really tell us. They only tell us that it's a brown-eyed man with a blue-eyed mother. And blue eyes is recessive. So let's do his parents. If his mom was blue-eyed, she would be little b, little b. And if he's brown-eyed, that means that his dad had brown eyes. So he could either be big b, little b, or big b, big b. Let's just try both of his parents and see what he could be. So this would be big B, little b, big B, little b, little b, little b, and little b, little b. So he's neither of these because he doesn't have blue eyes, but he could be big B, little b. Now, if the father, if his father was big B, big B. Let's see what happens there. Then it looks like all of the kids would be big B, little B. So if his mom was blue eyed and he has brown eyes, he's going to be big B, little B. So he marries a woman who also had a father with blue eyes and she's brown eyed. So she's also going to be heterozygous. So both of them will be heterozygous. Let's complete the Punnett square for them. So big B, big B, big B, little b, big B, little b, and little b, little b. What is the probability that this couple will have a blue-eyed child? Well, blue-eyed is recessive. Brown eyes are dominant to blue eyes, so blue eyes are recessive. And there's only one out of the four with little b, little b. So the probability is one-fourth or 25%. Let's do another practice. The color of flowers and snapdragons shows incomplete dominance. Red, CRCR, and white, CWCW, are homozygous, while pink, CRCW, is heterozygous. 
If a red snapdragon is crossed with a white snapdragon, what percentage of the offspring would be red? So incomplete dominance, it looks like will give us three different phenotypes. The heterozygous phenotype is pink and the two different homozygous phenotypes are red and white. So we have a red snapdragon, which is CRCR, crossed with a white snapdragon, which is CWCW. So let's go ahead and write these in. And it looks a little different from what we've done, but we'll just follow the same rules we have before. So here I'm going to have CRCW. Here I'm going to have CRCW. Here I'm going to have CRCW. And here I'm going to have CRCW. So the CRCW is pink and it looks like 100% of the offspring would be pink. So what percentage would be red? Well, 0%. Thanks for watching. You've got this.